When I got home, I mixed a stiff one and stood by the open window in the living room and sipped it and listened to the groundswell of traffic on Laurel Canyon Boulevard and looked at the glare of the big angry city hanging over the shoulder of the hills through which the boulevard had been cut. Far off the banshee wail of police or fire sirens rose and fell, never for long completely silent. Twenty-four hours a day somebody is running, somebody else is trying to catch him. Out there in the night of a thousand crimes, people are being beaten, robbed, strangled, and murdered. People are hungry, sick, bored, desperate with loneliness or remorse or fear, angry, cruel, feverish, shaken by sobs. A city no worse than others, a city rich and vigorous and full of pride, a city lost and beaten and full of emptiness. It all depends on where you sit and what your own private score is. I didn't have one. I didn't care. I finished the drink and went to bed. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I'll be your gaming monk for the evening. It's been a while since we've tackled a game in the style of neo-noir slash crime fiction umbrella of genres. A new decade is a good time to rectify that situation, I think. Now this is something that can be dipped into in previously covered games like Shadowrun, but a game like that has the supernatural aspect to fall back on to a degree. A full-on contemporary game is easy or difficult to sell for some tables, but I think that with the advent of police procedural shows, detective television, and fiction on both sides of the law, it can be a bit of an easier sell. But in a lot of those tales, you'll be seeing through the eyes of the law. Today, we'll be flipping that dichotomy on its head. Enter Killshot, a game about assassins that could arguably be described as a reverse detective story. This is because you're trying to leave as small of a trail as you possibly can in hopes the authorities don't get too far into the marks you're going after. How does it hold up? Well, let's find out. Before I go on, I should note that I'm covering the director's cut version of Killshot. It's not a full-fledged second edition, but more of an enhanced remake. That said, the presentation is fairly clean, using red text to highlight important parts throughout. But I do have some gripes. Much like Marvel Heroic Roleplaying, the game splits itself into a player and GM section. Now that alone is perfectly fine. But I'm not a fan of the page numbering gimmick of adding a letter to each, as the two sections are their own separate books. Exacerbating this situation is the lack of an index. This will doubtlessly make navigation difficult, even with a bookmarked PDF. As the saying goes, the devil's in the details. Character creation is a point-based affair. We'll be exploring this with our sample character in Junior Smith, a gun for hire, using the name as a alias. The first step is stat dice, as focus is the primary attribute. You have two d12 dice that can be spent on either body, sense, or mind. We'll be putting one each into body and sense. The second and largest step is training points. This is spent between other focuses, options, skills, and traits. Now focus is akin to an archetype which grants exclusive options to assassins. Options are akin to action-based feats, granting free or limited use actions. Skills is self-explanatory, and traits are more akin to passive feats. Now taking this into account, we'll spend 5 points on the Enforcer focus, granting us the Survival option. We'll put 2 points each into options in Alert and Detour. For Skills, we'll place 2 points in Dexterity, Alertness and Intuition, and 1 in Firearms. Finally, we'll put 4 points into Quick Reflexes. The last step is Equipment, for which we have $5,000 to spend on weapons, armor, and so on. We'll place this into a semi-automatic pistol, a motorcycle, and a helmet, leaving us with 1800 left over. Character creation is fine on its own, but the issue I have is presentation. First, I'm not on board with the game's insistence on having the fluff and crunch mixed together the way that it does, especially when it comes to detailing the character creation steps in the rules part. In addition, 
Killshot does have the D&D 3rd Edition problem of listing everything in one alphabetical batch. For example, the options list has the actions you get by default, as well as the focus exclusive options, and the options that require training points in one all-encompassing batch. But the bigger issue for me is a need for examples. Killshot's character creation is highly freeform, and I believe freeform character creation systems should show a few example archetypes that people can build upon. There's hints of that in suggested stat builds in the focuses, but that's just a bandage. Character creation isn't bad in practice, it's in the details, once again. Killshot uses a multi-sized dice pool known as the optional system. Much akin to games like Savage Worlds, it uses a pool of multiple die sizes. However, die size is not rating, but rather a representation of different factors. This ranges from the base d20 die, d12s for stats and focus, d8s for options, d6 for skills, and d10 for gear. These die sizes are rolled as appropriate and compared to a similar die pool by the director, with all dice having the explosion rule. The difference between the two is divided by 10 to determine the number of hits, or degrees of success. In combat, this is how damage is generated as well, with assassins only able to take 5 hits as a base. In addition, Killshot doesn't utilize initiative in the traditional sense, but instead uses a team-based approach. Each team has a set of actions based on the size of the team and whether they're, whether they're assassins, thugs, i.e. mooks, or marks, special characters the assassins are targeting. Whichever team the active role has is treated as having the edge, which is contrasted with triggers, a defensive version of edge that allows a team to steal edge and thus switch the process. Lastly, Killshot has an escalating consequence system known as evidence points. This is a pool that starts at zero and increases through mistakes like rolling ones, leaving witnesses, or other similar forms of evidence. This is a nice thing to keep track of, but I think that the book could use some examples on how these points could be used to play against the assassins. That's the general theme of the rules here. There's a lot of good, but there's a bridge that needs to be built between the idea and a full sandbox. I've seen Killshot described as a reverse detective game, and I can see that to an extent. I know it's getting repetitive at this point, but I feel the biggest flaw is in presentation. Not in the look of the book per se, but in how its ideas are presented. What we have here is a collection of thoughts, but there's too much of an assumption that the GM has been around the block enough times to make those ideas congeal. This is why examples of build, mechanical use, and so on are important. I know that this can be construed as hand-holding or presenting a railroad, and that's not my intent. My intent is to show that a game like this could stand to have better tools to turn newbies into experts. Because of that, the highest grade I can give this game is caution. Now, I want to make clear that if it had better presentation of its ideas, this would have been bumped to a recommended. The overall problem is one that I saw a lot over the 2000s and early 2010s. A game that's more an idea than it is a sandbox. With a bit of time on the GM's part, especially if they're a fan of the John Woo style of play, there's plenty to work with, but it will be tricky out of the box. Oh, yeah.